Mm-hmm. That's drunk. Hello, everyone, and uh, we're mixing it up a little bit this week by doing an LP instead of the usual uh, stuff you're expecting from this channel. If you're not into this, if you're not feeling it, that's totally fine. See you next week. But um, for now, I was uh, looking at uh, what other Halloween-y type games I could get into um, on Tuesday. As you could see, uh, if you watch Tuesday's video, that was Adventures of Dr. Franken. And uh, solidly mediocre game. Not something I wanted to recommend to anybody necessarily. But... Um, I figured, hey, you know what, rather than d go through the depths and f Super Nintendo stuff, like, uh, you know, I think last year I went through Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Those two are also not great games. Um, there's not really any new ROM hacks for Super Nintendo that are Halloween-y, so to speak. Um, I've done that in the past, too, but... Um, I figured, hey, what the hey, let's let's do just a classic like Super Castlevania 4. It's one of my favorite games. I'm not necessarily good at this game. So if you're watching this for some sort of like complete, <laughs> you know, like flawless run, like some guys like Arcus and, you know, the Mexican runner and those guys can do, uh, you are in, you are not in luck. You're in bad luck, actually. That's not what this is for. This is just to hang out. I've got some 12-year Glenn Levette over here. However, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, just just to hang out, have a drink, and play some Super Castlevania 4. I'm not that good at this game, but I figure it's a good time. And also, I want to mention that um, this is part of a collaboration with uh, somebody that I met through our podcast. And yes, I do. for those that do not know, I do have a podcast called Drunk Friend. It is the combination of SNES Drunk and NES Friend, uh, my friend Trav, as part of the Polykill uh, network. And um, so we had on a guest who lives in New Zealand, actually. That was a, a bit of a bit tricky to schedule. And she's an artist. She's actually a teacher. Um, her name is Layla Ataya. I think I'm saying her last name right. I know her first name is Layla, but... Um, if you go to the description or if you go to the pinned comment, it will lead to a video where she is doing a giveaway for some artwork she made uh, inspired by this game. Uh, it's really good. She's really a fantastic artist. Um, you can go to LaylaAtayaArtist.com and see some of her work. She does a lot of surrealist stu uh, stuff. It's all really trippy looking, really insanely skilled. She's very, very talented. Um, we had her on as a guest, and she asked about doing some sort of collaboration, and I said sure. So this is this is part of that. So um, there's also a link to the uh, artwork itself if you want to check it out. It's very cool, definitely spooky, fits the time of year, and all you have to do to enter the giveaway is just leave a comment and just hashtag giveaway that way I'm able it makes it easy for me to search in the comments and find everybody that has uh, entered everybody that's interested in, in entering um, and then I don't know I'll give like a day or two for for people to enter and I will randomly pick a winner I'll get in touch with you I'll respond to the comment we'll do some verification and that sort of thing and I'll be able to send you the artwork for free so that's, it's just all about uh, collaboration and, you know, promoting the arts, really. It's really all, what's important to me is promoting other artists and uh, that sort of thing, because uh, my mom was an artist when I was growing up. Is there anything back here? I never go this way, so I'm just gonna keep going this way. Um, no, my, there, I have a bunch of paintings that my mom made back in, you know, way before I was born in the 60s and 70s, uh, that she made back then, uh, so that was, uh, um, so anytime I have a chance to help another artist or promote another artist like Layla, um, I'm, I'm happy to do so because she's also, um, one thing I like about her channel is that, um, 
she's a teacher. So w the best thing about this giveaway, I think, is, which is actually really cool, is that um, if you don't win, she actually teaches you how to how to paint this anyway, or how to draw this anyway. So, you know, if, if you like it and you didn't win, well, just watch the video on, on how to make it yourself. And you still might have it, you know, you would just have to put in some elbow grease and all that to, to get it yourself. So yeah, um, all the links are in the description. I also have a pinned comment if you're interested. It's very cool uh, work and, oh, I actually forgot I was invincible there for a second. I should probably talk about the game here eventually. Um, God, I've played this first level so many times I could get through it like sleepwalking basically, but... Yeah, um, I'm excited to um, promote another artist. That's the that's the whole point of this. Hopefully, um, next month, November, uh, there will be a lot more collaborations going on with um, some people you might recognize on the YouTube community. I don't want to give anything away yet, but um, yeah, that's something that um, I'm looking forward to doing. I try and do something quote-unquote special every uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Thanksgiving in the U.S., for those that don't know, uh, is usually the last Thursday of November. So um, what I'm going to try and do is do some sort of collaboration with uh, a couple other uh, YouTube folk. In the past, um, I've done genre videos like, I, I, I think I did the giant, uh, here, I don't want holy water, I'm going to, I used to think that was ink when I was growing up, like a little jar of ink, but, uh, yeah, in the past, I've done, uh, genre videos on, on that Thursday and Friday, I've done, um, what else have I done, I, I did, uh, PS1 RPGs, like Chrono Cross, and, um, uh, Final Fantasy 7. I did, uh, you know, way back in the day when I first started, I did, uh, you know, Mario World and I think Link to the Past were the two that I did. So I, I try and bust out some spe the, the good stuff, uh, some something different. So this year's theme is going to be collaborations. Uh, and s so stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully you folks will like it. Hey, I'm cruising along pretty well here. I should have kept the cross. That wasn't very smart. Cross is the best weapon in the game. Um, when I was growing up, I used to think it was the the clock, which I th somehow thought was like a flower when I was a kid. I, I couldn't see the clock <laughs> part of it, so I thought it was like some sort of orchid plant thing. Now, obviously, it's a pocket watch. Not just any pocket watch. It's got to be a Castlevania-ish, ye old pocket watch. But yeah, um, yeah, that's the plan, though. We we want to give away some artwork, and we're gonna be doing some other collaborations. Gonna be super fun, and I hope you like it. What's odd about this uh, timer power-up thing is that it does not work on bosses, which is pretty ridiculous. It reminds me of Lagoon, where it's like, oh yeah, you can use magic, but you can't on bosses. It's like, well, pff, you're just making up the rules as you go. Oh, it was coming down just a little bit there. Anybody know, everybody knows that when you play Castlevania, you're supposed to jump to grab the orb. It's just one of those things that goes without saying. It's like when you play an RPG, you know you're supposed to talk to everyone. You know you're supposed to do certain stuff. When you play Castlevania, you're supposed to jump into the orb. It's, or when you play Contra 3, um, you're supposed to uh, do the pose with both guns on the top of that concrete tower towards the end of the level, the end of the first level. It just goes without saying, it's what you're supposed to do. Anyway, cruising right along, up. Oh, somebody grabbed me. Could you let go please, sir? Or ma'am? I always love the music in this level. That bass line is sick. Oh, we don't want that. Actually, we do want that. Screw it. That's right. I forgot I had the timer. Or the clock. The, the, I'm sorry. The pocket watch. The pedantic types will come after me for not 
not saying it. Not saying what it actually is. Well, actually, it's a pocket watch. <laughs> That's my nerd voice. Anyway, yeah, a lot of I still get comments from people uh, saying like I didn't know you had a podcast, and it's like yeah, that's probably because I I didn't actually come out and make a video promoting it or anything like that. Um, I've been using the channel uh, uh, comments uh, section for the channel itself to uh, kind of tell people about it and it's led to some people unsubscribing because I got so sick of hearing about it. <laughs> One guy's comment was literally like, why am I even subscribed to this channel? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know. Why are you? If you're going to complain about something so easily ignored, but whatever. Um, uh, what the hell was that? That was terrible. I wasn't concentrating. That's, that's my excuse. Jesus, that was bad. All right, let's get back on track here. But yeah, no, we've had on... Um, the podcast has been really fun so far. Um, I joked about starting a podcast when this uh, pandemic uh, started, and I knew I'd be working from home for a while. And um, I was like, oh, well, I guess I've got a lot of free time now. I think I might just start a freaking podcast. And Travis reached out to me on Twitter saying, like, are you serious? <laughs> I was like, sure, I guess. And we started the Drunk Friend podcast back in March. Was it back in March? I don't even remember what time exactly it was. But, um, yeah, it was, it's was. it been fun. We've had a lot of really, really good guests. We've had uh, Dan from Console Wars on a couple times. Um, and Dan's such a fun guy. I can't help. I, it's pretty embarrassing. I always end up getting smashed when Dan's on just because he's such a an easy hang and he's such an easy guest because, <laughs> you know, he's he knows his stuff. He's a good guy. He's a knowledgeable guy. He's very well spoken, obviously. Uh, he's a very creative guy, too. But uh, yeah, when uh, when he's on, I get drunk to like an embarrassing degree. And when I say drunk friend is the name of the podcast, I don't mean it to be like yeah, we just get, you know, shit-faced and, and stuff, and... Oh, I hate this thing. There we go. You know, that's... It's just... It really is just a name. But we do enjoy a, a uh, an adult beverage here and there uh, while recording. It's not a requirement to drink, though. We've had plenty of people on the podcast that uh, do not drink. Is this, are, is this a power-up here? No, it's not. I know that you can get the cross somewhere here, right? I think... But yeah, uh, our biggest guest so far was Summoning Salt, who is uh, kind of a big deal, I guess, especially in the speedrun community. Uh, dude is obviously really talented, a really good uh, storyteller. Um, his, the, the videos he makes and the way he structures them is, is awesome. So it was really good to talk to him. And uh, I guess the point of the podcast, I should talk a little bit about that, is... Um, Kind of to, to see people's uh, creative side a little bit, um, just to see what their process is like, what from the YouTube side of things and from the creative side of things. Um, ah, shit. There we go. Ah, don't go in there with that fellow. So yeah, when we have somebody... Oh, there's the cross. When we have somebody on like a Summoning Salt fe type fellow, um, we want to ask them, like, you know, <laughs> what's this What's this experience been like for you? Did, did you set out to, you know, be the speedrun documenter? And yeah, it turns out this dude is a speedrunner himself. Uh, he actually has the... Uh, fastest time to beat Tyson in the original punch out which is pretty crazy that is quite that is not easy that is a tough accomplishment um, I don't remember his time exactly I don't even know if he got him in the first round but um, he, he got him really really quick uh, and yeah the way he structures his videos in case you haven't seen his summoning salt stuff is uh, he uh, makes it kind of like a, a, a story of, like, the beginning and end of, like, the history of this 
particular oops this particular game's uh speed run history and he's got everything from everything from uh you know punch out of course uh to mario the original mario ah shit i didn't want that power up but whatever power up special weapon secondary weapon whatever you want to call it but yeah um he struck what other games is he? he's even done like wii golf uh or wii sports golf rather and uh yeah, what else has he done? He's he's done the history of like Mario 64, um, and he, he every video is be gets better and better. His co his video on the Contra speed runs is really cool, um, and he's a good guy to talk to. All right, good thing is you can hit these projectiles. Really, the first uh, two levels, yeah, I got my guy back at least my lost life that I recklessly threw away earlier. The first two levels in this game are pretty easy, I would say, despite my reckless death earlier. But um, after that, the game gets a bit tricky. You get those fish dudes that jump out of the out of the water and squirt you, and you take damage, and you fly backwards, as is Castlevania tradition. You can't have a Castlevania game without that without uh, flying backwards when you get hit. Knockback, that's the word I'm looking for. Even the, and this is one of my favorite soundtracks, maybe my favorite soundtrack period, it's like this and Secret of Mana. Uh, even the little music pieces between stages are so, so good. Uh, that's why, you know, I, I do get people saying like, why don't you do LPs more? Why don't you do stream on Twitch? That sort of thing. It's because when I play video games, I like to shut up. <laughs> I like to be quiet. I like to hear the music. I like to um, just chill out and relax. It's This is a fun thing to do by myself. It's not something... I'm not a natural entertainer when it comes to something like this. I see some people do their thing on Twitch um, that are really talented, that are able to talk and be interesting and play games at the same time. Um, this is pretty easy for me so far because I've played this game and I've played this part of the game so many times. But, uh, other folks, holy cow, like, they, I don't know how they're able to, to do what they do. I think I'm just gonna drop down here. Hey, that's no fair. I like that sound. Uh, not doing it justice, obviously, but... How does it go again? It goes wacko. Yeah. See, I'm not that interesting. I'm not that entertaining. All I can do is promote other people. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Who are the other guests we've had on the podcast so far? We've had uh, Dan, obviously from from uh, Console Wars. We've had uh, most recently uh, we're we're gonna have Genovi on. If those of you that, that know who he is. Uh, we're going, we've had, uh, Jason Heine, we've had John Riggs on, he's a pretty popular dude, and it's easy to see why he's popular, because he's such an easygoing guy, and such a, a likable fellow. Hey, I got the third one already, that's neat. Uh, this, this waterfall part coming up, though, is really, really tough. I don't like it. Yeah, this is it's it's after this part in the game where I start to run into trouble, like real trouble, as opposed to the fake trouble I was in earlier. Uh, I do uh, I I do also want to say real quick I I get all messages about my dog Clyde, and he is uh, sleeping right behind me to my right on my chair. Uh, on a blanket, of course, that I set up for him because that's what he likes to do and it has to be just so too he has to dig around on the blanket himself uh you know he has to make it up to his standards he needs to you know he wiggles around he wiggles his butt and tries to get in the perfect sleeping position 
And then he finally settles down. It takes like a full 90 seconds for him to do it. It's ridiculous. He's the most spoiled dog in history, but you know what? He's earned it. He's a good boy. My other dog, Ulysses, uh, we say he's got certain spots staked out in our backyard. And he, uh, we, my girlfriend and I, we joke that he's uh, quote unquote at work because he really does spend all day outside and he just waits for the mailman to come. He waits for like the UPS guy to come. He waits for anybody to walk by so he can bark at them and let everybody know. And when he barks at something, he goes freaking crazy. <laughs> like he is just, he's very happy to use that energy. It's always really funny. Shit. See, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. That's what's in there. Excellent. I just don't want to end up getting that stupid knife uh, secondary weapon. That's one of my least favorite weapons in this game. So, I, I'm cautious to hit. I don't remember which uh, set of candles it is so where's my other there we go I was waiting for my other uh, upgrade yeah this is I hate this part this is where uh, the slightest bit of knockback will kill you if you're not careful and even if you are careful it's like I try I was careful I tried I tried I really did and it didn't work out I tried so hard um, oh, you know what? That's probably a, yeah, let's, let's grab this. So, how are you folks doing? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I did want to do some sort of LP thing that's more of a, a hangout. Uh, you know, we're all stuck at home, or at least we in the United States are. I am, um... Hang on, I gotta concentrate here. There we go. It's hard to talk and do shit like that. I don't know how people do it. But, um... Yeah, no, hey, we're all stuck at home. We're, we're not like likely to do anything uh, on Halloween. If you are, please be safe. Don't be an idiot. Don't... Like, wear a mask and just use common sense if you have it. If you don't, then God help you. But, uh, just try and be safe if you go out. Uh, I would, you know, I think the safe play would be to just stay home. <laughs> There's plenty of stuff to do. Uh, plenty of great classic Halloween movies to watch. What is my favorite scary movie? I'll tell you, my, my favorite movie that kind of freaks me out and makes me uncomfortable is probably um uh what do you call it Night of the Hunter that stars Robert Mitchum and uh he plays this preacher that uh shows up in this he, he's basically a, a con man he shows up on in these uh these towns and um nice and uh, basically, as as a preacher, and puts the fear of God into him, and tr wins over the the whole the whole uh, town and all that. And it's it's only he's only doing it for I'll just to quote Marge Gunderson, doing it for just a little bit of money, all for a little bit of money. But yeah, he uh, is really really creepy in that movie, in both a good and kind of a bad way. He freaks me out so much he's such a he's really good at being uh, in that movie he's oh shit okay I was gonna get shot and blasted there this music in this part of the game always really confused me it sounds like uh, Ron Burgundy playing Yaz flute like what is this music <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> I guess it's kind of scary. I, I dig that bass sound for sure. It's fucking killer. 
but the flute is a little odd. Come on. There we go. Aha. Out of my way, bastards. That was a cool effect, even though it induces a little bit of slowdown, which is never fun. Can I, if I get this guy here, will he still probably respawn? I'm guessing. There we go. No, he didn't respawn. Neato mosquito. All right, what's cool is I can get this guy down here. Nice. All right, we're doing pretty good so far. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, so far so good, I think. All right, let's... Uh, this is where it would help to have like the ax or something like that. I don't think he can hit me from down here, but you never know. It's Castlevania, it's a Konami game. Ooh, fun. There we go. All right, I'm sure there's some lousy secondary weapon that's, oh shit. Oh, oh, dope. Oh. <laughs> Love how he sounds kind of frustrated when he gets hit like, nah. <laughs> he's angry with himself or something. He's disappointed. He's not mad, he's just disappointed. Hey, that's key. Okay. Uh, we're coming up on the boss here, I think. Uh, yes. Boss time, I do believe. And it's the double-headed dragon. Is it two dragons or three? I think it's just two. Slow down! Come on, S Super Nintendo CPU. Show me what you're worth. Show me what you got. I'm just gonna hang back here like a, an absolute coward and use my special weapons since I have lots of them. Even though this music is, uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's inspiring and it's, it's very intense and it's, you know, kind of trying to intimidate me. Ah. But really, this is all you gotta do, is just hang back here with the cross. Yay! Ah, didn't even wait for it to drop down. I went, went, went up and got it. What you gotta do in this world, you gotta go up and grab it by the orbs. Alright, so far so good, but I just took another swig of whiskey and that's never a good sign. Uh, because that's uh, not really gonna bode well for this part of the game, I'm guessing. Ah, this music's awesome. Love this part. I forget. Oh, nice. Yeah, there is something back here, but it's just that. Let's get this guy out of the way. Yeah, speaking of Robert Mitchum, there's a there's a really f cool not maybe I don't know. It's a story that I like um, about him when he hosted Saturday Night Live. Um, it's told by G. E. Smith, who, for those unfamiliar, he used to be the leader of the Saturday Night Live band. He would come up with all most of the arrangements, and he was the band leader. Um, he uh, was usually the guy they would bring out. Uh, G. E. Smith told this story, so he he was usually the guy they would have come meet guests when they first arrived. For whatever reason, I guess he was just a you know happy, fun guy, and he is. But um, Robert Mitchum was hosting, and this would have been like 1984, which is kind of unusual because Mitchum would have been a much older guy at that point. Okay, I need to concentrate here. Got it. Nailed it. But um, so SNL gets you know Lorne Michaels or whoever is in charge. Uh, Lorne Michaels would have been in charge at that point, I think. But um, he gets uh, in touch with Mitchum's people. Oh, we don't want that. So I just want to go this way, right? Yeah. All right. Need to concentrate here as well. There we go. Nice. All righty. So far, so good. All right. This is another part I need to concentrate. 
Very good. Okay, didn't even flip it. Cool. I'm doing pretty good, I have to say. <laughs> I'm surprising myself here. I'm not taking that much damage. I am playing like an, an absolute coward, but uh, it, when it comes to boss fights, but I'm not uh, getting my ass kicked here. Like, oh, no, nah, spoke too soon. But anyway, Robert Mitchum. Oh, we got a boss fight here. He, uh, his people uh, said to Lorne or whoever was in charge with guest booking and all that sort of stuff. Listen, he'll be happy to host, but I, he requires two things. He needs to be greeted at the door when he arrives with uh, a bottle, a brand new sealed bottle of tequila. And I forget, it's like this really expensive, fancy ass tequila. I forget uh, what uh, kind it was, but it was something absurdly, you know, fancy. And $5,000 in cash. So, sure, sure enough, when, when Robert Mitchum gets there for the table read, I think this would have been like on a Tuesday. Um, he gets there, and uh, G.E. Smith and a few other people are there to greet him. Hey, thanks for coming by, etc., etc. Here's your bottle of tequila that you wanted. And he's like, oh, great, I'll have a drink later. And then he's just kind of standing around like... Dum -dum 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 and everybody's like, what's going on? What's He's not going to go in the door? Like, he's... Why is he just sitting there? And GE's like, give him the fucking money. Give him the money. <laughs> and, oh, and here's your $5,000 cash. And they hand him a briefcase and he takes a quick glance and he's like, oh, all right, thanks. Yeah, all right, let's go. What do, what do you guys want to do? What, should we should we start with, re when's rehearsal? What are we doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'll, <laughs> I'll do anything. And I just thought that was really funny. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. Ugh. Well, at least I start here. See, now the liquor's kicking in. That's my excuse. But yeah, I always thought that was really funny. Where it's just like, <laughs> I'm not doing shit until you give me what I ask for. <laughs> he asked for cash and liquor. So, yeah. No, I love, I love stories like that. Like, Mitchum's old school. He's an old school guy. I managed to get this perfectly last time. The sound of the leather whip is really satisfying in this game. And yeah, insert a fetish joke here. s &M, whatever. Not into that stuff personally, but if you are, good job. Good for you. Alright, I guess apparently this needs to be a part where I need to shut up and concentrate because... Uh, I managed to kill myself last time. So let's see here. Let's wait for this. All right, and oopsie daisy. There we go. All right, let's get those whip upgrades. Let's keep rolling. Ooh, this this music's awesome too. That's one thing I keep forgetting to uh, check. Shit, I don't have a secondary weapon. That's not good. Give me that cross. So I'm gonna have to. I keep forgetting to check uh, to see if the what this looks like with the. Uh... Oh, that's the cross. With the uh, what do you call it? The BSNES uh, HD um, component. If it really does go widescreen, it'd be kind of cool if it did, but it would also be kind of disorienting because it's, you know, it's a freaking spinning background and it slows the whole game down. A lot of slowdown in this game that doesn't get talked about a lot. The problem with slowdown and I, you know, it's, oh, it, it helps you, it, it's actually a benefit because it helps you. It's like, no, that, it doesn't work like that because... You don't know when it's going to start, and you don't know when it's going to stop. That's the whole issue. That's why slowdown sucks, because it's unpredictable. You don't know when it's coming and when it's going. You can't just be like, I don't know. I, I, I could go on a rant like that on that stuff all day. All right, so we don't want to go that way. Oh, these bats are going to keep pestering me. All right, let's go this way. Another sick bass line. This game is just full of sick ass bass lines. 
Yep, I'm just gonna do that's my let's play. It's just me going I'm not gonna take that risk. I think I'm eventually supposed to make my way over here. Oh, can't get up there. Can I... Am I up there yet? Nope, I am not. So you gotta eventually make your way to the right, but it's above this part. Cool. I think I should make it. Nah, I don't need that. Not worth the risk there. Uh-oh. Now I'm trapped. That's not good. There we go. There we go. Aha! I hate the spikes in this game. They kill you so suddenly. go very nice all right so i forget i honestly forget which boss is coming up here but uh there's a lot of this this game that i forget let's see all right so isn't this exciting great way to hang out on uh, halloween cheers everybody that's uh, having a drink right now with me um i appreciate you coming up coming by to watch once upon a time, you know, I, I used to joke that I would get, like, you know, two dozen views on these things. I didn't expect any. Is it Frankenstein? I think so, yeah. All right, full health bar. That's pretty cool. Or no, it's the stone... Stone dude. Stonehenge where the demons dwell. Come on, you son of a bitch. Yes! Excellent. Just barely. Ah! I, I'm off guard. Caught me off guard, I went for a sip. That was the bad, that was the wrong move. Anyway. Yeah, if you if you if you don't want to enter the uh, giveaway with hashtag giveaway, let me know what you're drinking in the comments instead. Oh, shit's getting real now. That's what this music means. All right. Oh, the dogs are barking. Well, not really barking, not yet. They will, though. They're fired up about something. <laughs> Maybe they want to be on, uh, on mic. Alright, do I want to go this way? I, does it matter which way you go? One oddball thing about this uh, part of this level is that the time limit starts to become a factor if, you, if you'll notice in the upper left here or I'm sorry the upper right it's there's like a very abbreviated time period which is really strange and uh, yeah I've actually come close to running out of time at this part which is unusual but looks like I'm actually gonna make it to Dracula's castle which I was at, honestly kind of Oh shit. How many lives do I have left? Two? Three? Two? That was a very lazy jump. As soon as I said I, I'm going to make it to Dracula's castle, I died. So let's not uh, jinx ourselves anymore, huh? Hey Clyde, what do you think about what's going on, huh? Don't you got anything to say, Clyde? Clyde's not much of a barker. He can be, but he doesn't really uh doesn't he's a he's a dog of few words. He's he's very efficient with his uh with how he decides to how he chooses to communicate. 
if he ch if he chooses to communicate at all. And if he does, it's usually about naps or food. Usually naps. As Ulysses S. Dog is always very enthusiastic and very happy to express his thoughts in the form of woofing and barking. Such as when the mailman's here or the UPS guy or when somebody walks somebody dares walk their dog past our our house. It's I dare you. Ah, oh, I knew that was gonna happen eventually. Oh well. Get this crappy knife. Oh, that wouldn't have hit me anyway. Oh well. Yeah, as you can see, as it's, it's becoming pretty evident now, I'm not really an, uh, a much of an LP guy. <laughs> I run out of stuff to talk about, and I just end up talking about my dogs. Yeah, see, it's... Oh, give me a better weapon than that stupid knife. I need to keep going here. I'm gonna run out of time. We are at Dracula's Castle's doorstep. Then the game really gets fun. And by fun, I mean hard. Ugh, as soon as I get the health, too. As far as you can, you can always do the, the, whip, the whip spaz. Yeah. I'm sure that would work in real life. 45 seconds. Check out these statues. That's so cool looking. This one's all busted up. I wonder who these people are supposed to be. Are they all of himself? Yeah, see the, the timer starts to make a weird noise once you get to 30 seconds. I remember the first time doing that and it was like, what the hell is that? I'm just gonna play till I get a uh, game over. I've rambled on long enough. Sorry, concentrating. Intense concentration here. And I don't wanna whip these dogs. These are good dogs. They're just doing their job. Hmm. Maybe I'm giving the knife a little bit of a bad rap here. Seems like it's okay. Again, if you're expecting <laughs> a really uh, well-played Let's Play here, not gonna happen. This game sure is generous when it comes to ammo, though. There we go. Oh, now I can throw two knives at once. What do you do? It does seem to be pretty strong, though, so it's got that going for it. Ooh, fun! I remember seeing this for the first time as a kid and being like, oh my god! Like, so intimidating. Alright, let's get this. Let's not. No lazy deaths here. And to be fair, this is still really impressive looking to this day. Got it! Alright, cool. Be, be cool if there was like crap falling on you from the ceiling. Or like maybe this thing itself would fall somehow if you stood on it for too long. I don't know. I'm just... Let's make this game even harder. That's, that sounds good. And the background effect is really cool too. Just the candlelight kind of flickering a little bit intermittently. All right, there we go. Another one? Oof. Okay, um, let's go now. Let's wait. Ah, just barely made it. My toes were able to grip the edge of that platform. <laughs> 
All right, now if I remember correctly, there is a... Yeah, it's this damaged... I don't know if it's this one or the next one. Yeah, it has to be the next one. Damn it. Maybe not. I could have swore there was a hidden area. Maybe it's here? Nope. There's something you can do to, to unlock this after it falls. I just don't remember what it is. And there's all sorts of goodies down there. Creepy. Just the sound they make. Shit, I'm gonna die. Oh, that was lazy. What does that guy look like? Looks like almost like a Matthew Modine. Oh, I could really use some health. <laughs> Come on, see if I can get down there. Without anybody killing me, uh, that's not health, but uh, it'll do. Oh shit. There we go. Promising. Oh shit. Yeah, I don't know who that guy would be. It's like... Is that supposed to be a butler? I don't even know who that is. Come on. Oh, I did get some health. Neato Mosquito. Okay. Yeah, who, are, who is this dude? Is it freaking Michael Buffer? The silver hair makes me think it's Michael Buffer. So I'm gonna stick with that. I don't know what Michael Buffer has to do with Dracula, but... Or maybe it's his brother Bruce Buffer. Maybe he took the gig. Michael Buffer turned him down. Didn't, didn't like the terms of the contract that Dracula laid out. There we go. Oh, I could really use more health. Any health, please? Just barely dodged my axe. Come on, if you get hit with an if a skeleton gets hit with an axe like that in midair, it's going down. Ugh, oh, I start way back here. Sheesh. So at least this gives me another chance to see if I can unlock this, which I don't think there is. Hey, I got another life. You guys get to suffer with me for another uh, however long. Uh, I forgot what it is you do, but something like... Uh, it unlocks a, a hidden area with all sorts of fun stuff. Uh-oh, I don't want two of these. Shit. <laughs> that did not... Uh, should have planned this a little better. There we go, that worked out. Ah, Michael Buffer. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, one thing, uh, when I first did the video on this game, uh, I think it was back in 2014, six years ago, over six years ago at this point. Um, I, this is one I was worried wasn't going to hold up very well when I played through it, and uh, it more than holds up well. I think this is a top 10 Super Nintendo game ever. Um, a lot of people think, not, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some people think that Simon is a little overpowered, that the eight whip direction is a, is a bit much, that maybe he should, uh, excuse me there, uh, maybe he should, uh, just stick to whipping in two directions, since, um, 
that's what the way it was for the NES Castlevania games. And uh, that is a big part of what led to its infamous difficulty. What's this? No. Shit. Ah, screw you, Michael Buffer. Moonwalking uh, across those spiky platforms. But yeah, uh, I think it's fine. Uh, I think this game is still plenty hard with uh, the way, even with the whipping in eight directions, it's still really tough. I mean, the platforming here with the Simon's oddball jump is is always going to be, a, you know, a bit of a challenge. Come on, you damn skeleton. Yeah, if I throw an axe at a skeleton, it's not just going to, like... Oh, he did some damage. It's gonna freaking break it apart in a million pieces. First blow. Axes are heavy. You know, despite the fact that Simon is uh, able to carry 21 of them, in, in this case, at the same time, somehow. Can this guy go downstairs? He can. Okay, neat. <laughs> yep, time to go Rambo. Whip first, asks questions later. Yep, nothing over here. I'm getting a little punchy, I'm not gonna not gonna lie. Ooh. Uh now we are in a dungeon of some sort. Ooh, red skeletons. Or red skeletons, get it? Heh <laughs> heh. About that shit. Red Skelton, the old, uh, is he, would he call Red Skelton a comedian, or was he more of a TV star? I don't know. No, nobody even knows who I'm talking about, so whatever. God damn it. It's a very musical sound when these guys crumble. <laughs> it's like a bone xylophone. Ah, some helping hands to help me out there. Ah, excellent. Okay, cool. <laughs> to think there's some guy on the other side of the wall that's doing this. Coochie, coochie, coo. <laughs> so dumb. And then there's another guy down here. It's just a line of guys lined up outside the house. I should be coming close to the boss here, which is that dancing couple. I mean, where the heck are these people? The dinner party of the damned. Oh yeah, we've got our carousel of coffins. Very classy. Must be tough to make all these coffins. I wonder if he goes to like uh, Ikea or something and builds them. You know, obviously Dracula's not gonna make coffins himself. He's gonna make his minions do it. You know, that's what the Tor Johnsons of the world are for. You gotta have henchmen if you're evil. Oh yes, evil dancing couples. How dare you do romantic ballroom dancing in my presence. I'm going to whip you. <laughs> I'm not just going to banish you, I'm going to whip you with the vampire killer whip until you stop dancing and explode into flames. I mean, jeez, man. Dude's got issues. All right, more health. <laughs> more lives, more health. Just what you, the audience doesn't want to hear. <laughs> All right, I think this is Frankenstein. No, that's duh. I already said it's the... I'm trapped. <laughs> Do I go all the way back? No, I go right here. Okay, that's good. Not a bad thing. The mu this music is fun. So, note to self, don't get trapped like an idiot in the corner. 
let them let those people bust a move all over the the screen. Don't uh, don't sit there and watch them like an idiot. All right, I just need a secondary weapon, please. Right, hopefully, that's what this is. No, of course not. That would actually be helpful. Now, who are these people? It looks like uh, not quite my Michael Buffer. Maybe it's... Uh... Here, we're going to see him again here. Well, the guy's gray, but the woman isn't. The woman looks relatively young, but the guy is either blonde or gray. So maybe it's Richard Gear and uh Richard Gear and Christina Ricci, I don't know. That'd be a weird combo. Yeah, I get my guy back every time. Yeah, Richard Gear and Christina Ricci. Let's let's go with that. I don't have a secondary weapon. This is bullshit. There we go. Just outlast him. <laughs> ah, caught me off guard. Haha. -ha. All right, now we are on to the seventh level, which I forget if it's the treasury room or the library. I know it's not the dun the torture chamber. That's level 8, and that's when the game gets really hard. Oh, this is the library. This is some of my favorite music in the game. So I'll just shut up and you guys can listen. Gotta get out of the habit of saying you guys. You, f you folks. You folks. Gotta bust out the Minnesota accent, you know, every once in a while. You know, I was cooking on my stove. Gotta go out to my car. Yeah, I love this music. It's so good. Ah, shit. Hey, I, I hit you 4,000 times. You're not dying? Out of the way. What are these things? They look like uh, rodent ghosts. Like their 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 faces are weirdly skeletal, but they're kind of rodentish too. Like look at that. Is that like Rocky the Flying Squirrel trying to haunt me? I don't know. Aha, finally, a secondary weapon, and one that's worth a crap. Those things come back, too, once you kill them. They don't just stay dead. It's kind of annoying. Boy, what an unorganized library. It's got these freaking MC Escher stairs everywhere, and dorks flying around with jars. No, I don't want your stupid axe. Yeah, I should probably keep these going 24-7. So what's nice about this library stage is that you can you really can just fall and the stage will scroll with you if you don't die first, which I am about to do. Yeah. And I start at the beginning. Lovely. Man, the leather whip is really shitty. Here, let's study this thing some more. Alright, we have a... It almost looks like a Serpentor-style helmet around something. You know, like uh, the way Serpentor from G.I. Joe has that, like, snake head around his face. That's kind of what it looks like. By the way, uh, for those that don't know that grew up with G.I. Joe, um, Hasbro actually has a uh, YouTube stream, 24 hours a day, G.I. Joe episodes, and I think it's just the 
Marvel uh, Sunbow episodes. It's not the uh, crappy Deke episodes that came later, which were just awful and, you know, made on like a shoestring budget. And the stories were just, <laughs> you know, Roadblock, you know, needs a ride or something like that. <laughs> Roadblock uh, decides to trust a stranger and gets a ride somewhere or something like that. I forget. Something stupid. There we go. But uh, yeah, it's you can tune in at any time. There's, it's got, uh, it's pretty much just the Marvel Sunboat era, which means it spans from '83 to when did those end? Like '90 or like '89, somewhere around there. Oh, that was dumb. But God, those guys do a shit ton of damage. Wow. Yeah, maybe that's the move. Man, screw you. Wow, thanks. <laughs> A nice boost all the way down here. God, I hate those things. Ah! Alright, last life. Let's make it count. I'm, I'm feeling really punchy, and I just missed my, uh... Whip upgrade there. That was real slick. But yeah, G.I. Joe aged a little bit better than I would have thought. Um, and by the way, uh, hot. Here, here's my G.I. Joe hot take. I think... Oh, shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I think... Uh, um, Zartan is much cooler and a much better villain. A much more interesting vi villain than Cobra Commander. Cover Commander just kind of sucks. He's kind of incompetent. He's got the cool voice, but he's, he's kind of a moron. Zartan can turn invisible, and he can kind of shapeshift, but only at night or something like that. He's he's got a he's I like Zartan, and he see he actually seems like he's got his shit together. Like he he's he's coming up with the cool plans half the time. It's usually Cobra Commander that screws him up. It's what I like at the beginning of the G.I. Joe movie, when uh, everybody's like, uh, it, like first it's Destro that calls him a world-class buffoon. And uh, yeah, good times. And then like Dr. Mindbender's right there, like, he's also a coward. And it's the trial of Cobra Commander, like he's Jesus Christ or something like that. It's so over the top and ridiculous. But, um, yeah, the, the G.I. Joe movie I'm not all that crazy about. Uh, uh, the, fr the opening scene is incredible but just because of the animation and all that stuff is awesome. But um, the rest of the movie, uh, like the Cobra Law stuff, nope, not, not working for me. All right, let's see if I can just, like... Why don't I just, like teleport down here. <laughs> well, that backfired. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call this a, uh, an LP. I got to level 7. I got to the library. That was... That's decent. And I ran out of stuff to talk about. Again, if you want to join the drawing, random drawing, I'll give you a couple days. Um, just hashtag giveaway. I'll randomly pick somebody. And um, we'll get in touch after that. I'll get in touch with the winner. And uh, we'll verify everything, and uh, I'll be sending out some artwork for you. And be sure to check out Layla's channel, too. And uh, you can also go to LaylaAtayaArtist.com for her website. All right, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and have a happy Halloween.